How's it going everybody? Jeff Chrysler here, a detail enthusiast, and here with my next installment of my 132nd scale Border Models Lancaster build. So the aircraft is finished in the last build, and now I'm uh, building this custom display case slash coffee table for our living room so I have a place to house it. So I just built this uh, out of wood myself and um, it's going to have this removable top. Uh, um, I'm using plexiglass for the perimeter sides and uh, and then it'll be uh, six mil tempered gla real glass in the top so it can be a coffee table. So six mil tempered should be, I, I spoke to the glass people and they said that should be plenty sufficient for a coffee table top, especially since it's in a surround. If it was exposed edge glass, they would recommend a little thicker than that. But uh, yeah, so this is what we're going with. Um, so yeah, I'm just building this case. And um, like I say, I'm still constructing the top. It's going to have a lip of wood glued and nailed to the inner edges that are, that will hold the top edge of this uh, plexi into the side. So it all kind of slots together. So the top will have to be... Uh, carefully two people drop it down into the uh, table frame when we set it up in the living room but I'm going to be painting the whole thing you can see I'm going along and filling all the nail holes and um, I've just been using an air nailer carpenter's glue I jointed the these legs so that the rails go on either side you can see there the joints that I cut so um, yeah, so it holds together really well. And then uh, in the living room, uh, once it's in the place I've got, I have a three foot diameter circle mirror that's gonna go in the floor of this. Um, like I say, the whole thing's gonna be nice and painted. And then I, I have uh, LED light strips that are gonna go around the entire top perimeter just under the lip here to shine down. So you'll have the mirror reflecting it back up as well. So it'll be quite a feature piece in our room. So I'm quite excited about it. And the uh, light strip I have is color changing so I can ch change whatever effect I wanna have. I can, um, so it should be really good. I'll show you the progress as I finish building this. Okay, and here we are. I've just uh, put my second coat of uh, white paint on. Of course, I primed the whole, sanded and primed the whole thing first. Um, I'm using this uh, Seco furniture and cabinet paint. It's like a melamine finish, heavy duty, so it'll be really good, strong, have a slight sheen to it. So once I get, uh, you can see I've got these LED lights that just come on a spool. And it's like peel and stick, and there's like lights every two inches. So I'll be doing that all the way around the upper perimeter. Well, actually it'll be in, in the top. And then there's just a little plug in. So when I put the top on, I just plug it in as I'm pulling it down. And uh, so yeah, and then I'll have all the uh, cording, um, writing down one of the inside legs and having the power pack underneath of it and coming out the bottom corner there. So yeah, that should be really nice. So tomorrow I'll come in and put a third coat of the white on just to make it really nice and have good coverage. And then uh, I'll probably move this whole thing to my house and get it set up with the plexiglass sides. And uh, I'm expecting the glass top to be in by the end of next week. So I can get it set up and ready. Look at that, both lengths together on the table. I've just taken this one down off the wall and I'm gonna be moving it to my workshop. Um, and uh, so the table that I'm building will house the new one, obviously. So that will be the one we have at home. So it's <laughs> the problem with owning such big Lancasters, you gotta find real estate to, to house them. So one will go to the shop on the wall and the other one will go in our home in the coffee table. So nice to see them together. This is the only time we'll see them together, I believe. So yeah, nice shot. Might as well document it while we can. HK versus border models. HK is a nice kit, but uh, no comparison to the border models kit. 
I recall, uh, you know, you've got the dinghy in the wing here on the right wing of a Lancaster, and that HK, they had that dinghy hole on both wings. They just did an exact copy of the right wing for the left wing, so I had to, you know, sand that down and rescribe new panel lines and make it disappear, basically. And uh, same thing with the lights under the wing, they did that on both, so you had to fill in and rescribe over the lights that aren't supposed to be on the one wing. Lots of little things like that, but uh, yeah. It turned out to be a pretty nice kit in the end anyway. I, I took my time and did that. Then I found out that the border model existed and uh, well, had to have it, <laughs> had to have it. You look at that panel line detail, just amazing. And here we are. The HK Lancaster is successfully moved to my workshop and nicely hung on the wall there. And wow, I think it looks great there really adds to the room. So yeah, this is my the downstairs of my workshop here. And as you can see, I've got my other display ca cabinets over there. This is my collection of scale model cars. So I'll show you some of this. Um, so of course, these are all uh, plastic and resin kits that I've built and painted and detailed myself. So this whole shelf here is all various uh, makes and models of Austin Healy's, which are my number one <laughs> car that I do uh, upholstery work for, and uh, of course I own one of my own. And uh, this next shelf down here, this is all Mercedes 300 SLs. Love those. One of my favorite cars. So iconic. Um, this, this is all, well, you got four Ferraris here, and then an E-Type Jag tucked in there. Um, and then on the bottom here, this is a bunch of British classics. So some MGBs and a Mini and Lotus and some Triumphs, TR3s and two. So, and then coming on over here, we got a Healy 100S, that's a die cast model. That's one that I didn't build, but, uh, and then this is a whole shelf of Jags. You got the XK120 and the C type and a D type and an XKSS, and an E-Type. And this is all various Porsches, 356, and a 904, and some early 911s. Lots of, love lots of uh, Porsches, the early stuff. This is all, you've got some Aston Martins, uh, DB4, DB5, and uh, DB23, and a pair of E-Type Jag Roadsters. And then this is some uh, Japanese cars. You got uh, the Toyota, um, the Mazda Cosmo, the early Honda S500, Lotus Elan there, and of course a Volkswagen Bug. And uh, over here we've got some pre-war cars, an old Alfa Romeo, of course the Bentley Blower, uh, uh, Bugatti, uh, MGTC. Um, and uh, of course, 130 second scale, that's Douglas Batters Mark II Spitfire. And uh, down here, there's a 172nd Typhoon scene with all the figures in that. Of course, on top here, we've got another, this is a 172nd scale Lancaster with its whole scene, with all the crew and figures there. So, so yeah, that's my, workshop collection of stuff. So this link fits right in. So nice addition to the shop. Of course, there's my Healy 100. I think it's gonna go really nicely. And here we are in our tiny apartment. The table is moved home. So that is looking fantastic. Really ties the room together. Cats like it too. So I've got the LED lighting in there and like I was mentioning before, it has all these light settings. So you can turn on just the white as I've done here and then you can add color to it by turning the color on. You can adjust how strong the white is. It can turn it down to like 50% or 25% and then play with the color, whatever I want it to be. 
I can put it on just random color changing, you know, however I want it to be. And uh, yeah, it's pretty great. I, I really like it. So yeah, very happy with how this has come together. It looks really great in this case with the LED lighting and the mirror underneath of it. It just really sets it off. So yeah, it's uh, since my last video, as far as the aircraft, like um, I've been mostly working on this case, obviously, but uh, with the aircraft, I've done a number of improvements and upgrades as well. Um, just, you know, touching up paint work and getting things a lot better than they initially were. And uh, it's funny, I go through these videos that I've made and you see, you know, things look so much different under the camera than they do when you're building it. And uh, you can catch all the details and mistakes that I've made. So I've been going along and redoing. I actually completely repainted the KMZ on this side and actually did a bunch of work around the ED331 to make that a lot better and more crisp. So yeah, it came out much nicer. Um, there had, I had had an issue when I was using the oils. I got it onto the KM there and it made the whole upper half of the letters quite dark and I couldn't get that darkness out. I was trying to, you know, reduce the oils with odorless sinners and it was just removing the red paint. Uh, you know, little by little and just making it fade more and more. So I ended up just completely remasking and respraying this entire side. And uh, same with the roundel, there was some, it wasn't perfectly centered and I had to redo the red dot. Um, but yeah, you'd never know. Glad I did it because it would have bugged me forever. You know, <laughs> there he was. So yeah, but came out really nicely. You can see those three light lenses underneath there, the yellow, red, and green, and uh, um, yeah, when this thing all comes to life, which it does, um, you can see all the lights inside as well. Uh, it doesn't really show well on camera, but uh, when you're actually looking through the windows, you can see a lot more than I'm able to get with this camera, but it's, well, the interior lighting is just essential for a model like this, I think. It really brings it all to life and allows you to see all the hard work and detail that you've put inside. So I'll show you how I've uh, got it set up for the time being with my switch. Um, I'm going to be addressing this wire at a later date. I think I'm going to probably drill a little hole and, and just route it underneath so it's, you know, because right now it's quite unsightly, but I can fix that. Um, so yeah, what I've done, um, the, the aircraft wiring, wire comes over and I've got a, a smart switch that I got for it. I'll show you that. So you can see this is the smart switch. It's just a little plug-in and then the adapter for the aircraft uh, wiring plugs into that. And uh, I needed a switch because there's no switch on the adapter. So you got to plug it in and out, unplug it every time you want to turn the aircraft on or off. So decided to get a switch to make that a lot easier. So I got this sm smart switch, so I can turn it on here just by pressing the button, but I can also link to this with an app on my phone, and I can just use my phone to turn it on and off whenever, which is pretty neat, new technology, great things to have. So I'll start it up and go through the cycle here. We got lighting coming on inside first. And then you got all the wingtip lighting. And then, yeah, one by one, these engines fire up. So you can see, try not to be too jarring with my movements, but uh, yeah, you can see in the reflection on the mirror, the wing lighting underneath the wing too is on. And of course the red wingtip lighting. And uh, I'll just take you through some more shots of the aircraft you can really love having that mirror in there it just adds a whole different dimension to viewing it you can see the lighting inside there you can see the navigator's table through that little window so pretty neat so here we are, Lancaster itself is all finished and beautifully displayed in my 
coffee table cabinet display case with all the electronics running. So now I'm working on completing the rest of the scene and I've ordered some uh, bomb carts and a uh, little tractor and a, an MG and a Jaguar sports car. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna have in the scene, but uh, build them up and see which ones look more realistic. And then I've got crew members. So just getting into the painting of, I've got a number of uh, RAF crew and personnel uh, sets of figures here that um, this set here is a resin set that, you know, had some assembly required to, you know, glue their bags on and their heads and parachutes and things like that. Um, this is a resin set from AC Models and it's actually called the Lancaster Crew. So it's got all the uh, crew members properly represented. Here's the uh, uh, wireless operator with his homing pigeons there. Um, that's what those little boxes are under his arms. Um, and yeah, so they're all there. Um, and then I've got some more figures here. I've got, uh, so that's from uh, AC Models out of New Zealand. That's a resin kit. Um, and then I've also got this set uh, from uh, Master Box Limited, uh, World War II uh, RAF pilots. Um, or Ethan comes with the little dog there. So I'm painting those guys up as well. And I've got this other set, um, which is from ICM, and it's just ground crew personnel. So I've got a whole bunch of figures here. I've just decided I'm going to paint them all together. Obviously, I'm not going to use all of them with my Lancaster scene. I'm going to pick which ones I want to use and use others for other things. But uh, getting into the painting of them and for... Uh, Painting figures, I've always learned it's best to start with a base coat of black. So I sprayed them all in the in the black, just using the uh, Mr. Surfacer black. And now I'm coming in and dry brushing the, the color and just going over the surface of it with a dry brush, as I say, and uh, letting the black stay in the nooks and crannies. And it gives a nice, you know, shadow effect. So I've just so far done the uh, field blue on there pants and uniforms, but uh, I'll be doing the rest of them uh, over the next hours in all the various colors. Meanwhile, I've got, uh, I've decided I'm going to do a, a payload of the incendiary bomb. These are incendiary containers. They were like an aluminum container box and they had all these tiny incendiary bombs. What you see on the bottom here, depending on the photos you're looking at, what the model has depicted, you've got this corrugated aluminum thing that would drop off, uh, which delivers the little explosives that are all inside of here. And they're like little sticks of explosive. I've seen photos of incendiary containers where all of those explosives are fully exposed and you can see these little strap pieces going over top of them. And I've seen other photos where it has this corrugated sheet of aluminum hiding them so the model has decided to do this corrugated sheet of aluminum hiding them so that's it, that's all you're really going to see there um you could model these by you know not putting this corrugated section on and trying to do it with the individual tubes or sticks of incendiary bombs anyway Modeling these cases, they're just aluminum boxes. These were made in three pieces. So you got the corrugated side on the bottom and then these two halves. And so you got a big seam here you've got to try and hide. So I thought I had it hidden really well. I spent a lot of time gluing these together and then sanding out the joints and it looked pretty good. But when I sprayed them in aluminum, you could still see the line pretty clear. Uh, aluminum color really shows well, any kind of light gray or aluminum really shows the blemishes. So I've come back in there with some uh, Mr. Surfacer 500, put it on all of the joints. So now I got to sand that out again and repaint them again to try and get them better. And just arrived in the mail today. You can see I've got a couple of bomb trolleys from Belcher Bits. So they're resin kits that you put together. They've got the wheels and all that. So I've got a Type D trolley, these are generally used for carrying the cookie bombs, and I got a Type C trolley, which are generally used for carrying those incendiary uh, containers. So 
ideal glad to have found these online so we'll get those assembled and painted and put them all together with the incendiary and cookie so okay and here is the results of my painting uh, with the dry brushing technique like I was showing you earlier so yeah came along came out really beautifully you can see I've left the black in all of the nooks and crannies which gives it a really nice uh, depth and uh, shows the shadows and really brings it to life now I've gone over these with some uh, some of the Tamiya uh, dark brown panel liner accent so that again goes into all the nooks and crannies and brings out the detail even further um, and yeah just finishes them off really nicely now that panel liner wash being a, a solvent base it gives them a bit of a sheen so that's what that shininess is so I'm still going to go over these guys with a dull coat to mute it down and help blend it all together but uh, but yeah you get the idea they, they really come to life with that technique so <clears throat> I am probably going to spend a little bit more time on the the skin tones on their faces and come in with a few different colors of uh, flesh tone to, uh, again, using washes uh, seems to be very effective on this kind of stuff. So I'll come in with maybe a bit more of a pinky shade and, and give them a bit of a wash. Um, plus, I, I'm going to, I've got about four different sh shades of flesh tones that I'm going to use and I don't want them to all be exactly the same because people are not the same there's all different we're all different colors and nationalities so we can show some variances there and uh, I actually saw a set that I might get that uh, is uh, for just painting flesh tones and it shows you know there's about 10 different uh, flesh colors in there from white to black and uh, so I might end up getting that and experimenting so that covers the figures again this this lower set is that uh ac models uh lancaster crew set so it's resin and then these guys there's two different sets up there um, which i was showing you earlier so uh coming along with the bombs you can see here is i've got uh i'm gonna take you through this i've been busy as you can see here are those incendiary containers. I got the those seam lines all filled and looking nice. So I've got these all done and repainted in the aluminum color. So they'll just be lined up like this on uh, with the corrugated part facing down because that's how they were installed into the aircraft. And then of course I'm going to install some of the the bomb hangers onto them, which. Uh, which the uh, the border models they give you plenty of bomb hangers to do all of these so so and they're really lacy tiny uh, spindly things that uh, you build up multi piece bomb hangers so I'll be building up and installing those bomb hangers next on a bunch of these so I'm gonna have a few of them in the aircraft already but the majority I think are gonna be on one of these bomb trolleys so and here is the cookie bomb. You can see again, I got that seam nicely filled and looking much better. I got a little uh, uh, stabilizer propeller on the front there. And uh, yeah, this uh, I was looking in, a, in a, a video or sorry, what was it? It was instructions for these bomb carts because uh, these bomb carts came out as a kit shortly after the HK Lancaster model came out and they discuss how to... Uh, all the modifications you need to do to the HK cookie bomb to make it more accurate, like adding these uh, uh, rigging hardware on the top of it and um, this this ring around the front edge of it. And so, uh, but the border model, as you can see, comes already correct. So you don't have to do anything. You just build it up. Um, so, of course, I've still got it now that it's painted in the olive drab. I'm going to give it a, a, a gloss coat to uh, get, because it is such a flat color, this all olive drab. So I'm going to give it a dull coat, and then I'm going to put the decals on it that uh, come with the border model. So there's a, a red stripe around the front, and then there's a thicker green stripe around here, like a bright emerald green. Um, so, And those stripes actually denote like whether the bomb is charged and or not. So they would put the stripe on after it was charged. Um, so interesting little details there. And here is these bomb carts. They're not finished, obviously, but I've 
built them up um, and and I've sprayed them in the dark earth, which again, this, this these resin kits for these uh, give you a nice little history overview and talk about the colors and all of that. Um, so yeah, they say the majority were sprayed in the dark earth. Um, they were um, different colors earlier before the war, um, but in wartime, they were the dark earth. So, um, yeah, those came out really nicely. I've just got to paint the, the rubber black on the tires, basically, and then give them some weathering and chipping and whatnot to help blend them in. And so this one, of course, is for the cookie, so that sits nicely on there. So really nice little kits, these, these models from Belcher Bits in Canada. So glad to have those. So, and then here's the other style. That's the D-type of bomb trolley here and then this one is the C type. I just got it all of my incendiary bombs on top of it just for the time being. Um, but yeah this one came as you can see it's a bit warped so what I'm gonna do to alleviate that is uh, I'm gonna have it on a with a flat surface under the main frame here I'm going to be gluing these incendiary bombs onto it as I had them there and those will help to straighten out the frame so that it's not so that it's not warped. So yeah sometimes happens with this resin stuff it warps but uh, yeah that should be an easy fix if, if I just glue these incendiaries to it it'll help level it out. So again just got to paint those tires and then uh, I'll probably do the weathering and chipping on them and then I'll glue it all together and finish it off. So nice little accessories. I'm still waiting for, I've got a, a, a tractor and a little uh, a power unit uh, on their way. Um, so once those arrive in the mail, I'll get those built up and painted as well. And then we can decide what we're going to do and arrange these as a scene with the Lancaster. Okay, so after many hours of detail painting and deckling and weathering, I've got my cookie bomb all finished and mounted on the bomb trolley. I've still got to go over it with just a dull coat to blend it all in, but I I airbrushed, I masked and airbrushed the uh, stripes on it, as it should have. Uh, the wider green one versus the narrower red one, they both denote different charges that are in there. Um, and finished painting and weathering these uh, incendiary containers and I've got the little uh, the lettering on them that say what they are lot 27 pit incendiary they say uh, I've got the little ladder crew ladder for the side door of the lank and then here's the rest of the incendiaries that I will have mounted in the aircraft um, here's some of the mountings for the cookie to, to mount it in the bomb bay. So I've got to paint these still. And I've got to paint these still. I just finished making these. i got to say, these are probably the trickiest pieces of the entire kit to put together. I was hours getting these together. Such tiny spindly pieces. And, you know, each one you've got the long piece and then these two pieces are separate. And you got to cut them out and clean them up lots of stuff to clean up on them and then you know it's a slot into a slot sort of thing and they are very tight fitting so I had to like put it in with a little bit of extra thin the extra thin would soften it just enough and then I had to squeeze it with my tweezers and you'd hear it go pop pop each one but they were very difficult and I lost several of these little guys across the room trying to hold them with tweezers so got them all together i've got a full set enough to do all of the incendiary containers so now i've got to paint these in probably a, a gunmetal type of color so i'll get those painted and weathered and then i'll install them onto the incendiaries some of them and some of them i'll just have in the uh in the bomb bay um ready to receive more incendiaries so uh yeah, make some interesting detail there. And uh, yeah, I did some uh, weathering on these bomb carts. I got a little bit of chipping. It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, went over it with some washes, black washes to go in all the nooks and crannies, some chipping. I've got mud on the wheat on the tires that, uh, again, just use a wash of, of mud and then wiped it away 
with some uh, odorless uh, thinners and uh, yeah really gave them a nice look. So these are just about ready to go together with the scene. I've got these, I've got the figures up there. I'm just waiting on the tractor and uh, um, accumulator uh, that I've ordered from Iconic Air um, out of the UK. So once those arrive in the mail, I'll get those assembled and painted and we'll put it all together with the rest of the scene. Okay, and here we are all painted. I gave them a spray of the Tamiya X11, the chrome silver, and then I just went over each one with a panel liner wash of black to go in all the nooks and crannies, so they look great. So, and then I've given everything else, you can see the that same wash used on all of the incendiary bombs. I've gone over everything else now with a dull coat, and uh, yeah, really, blends it all together and makes it look great. Made those decals just blend right in too because these were all decals rather than sprayed on, the, the lettering here as well as that. Um, I, I did spray the stripes like I said earlier but uh, the rest is decals. So yeah that's all blended together and looking great so ready for installation and assembly. And look what's arrived in the mail today. I've got this package from Iconic Air, so it's their 132nd scale RAF David Brown Tugmaster tractor. So here's the whole kit with the instructions and decals and these three bags of all the parts. So it looks like very detailed kit, so I'm excited to build this. That'll go really well with those bomb carts there. And to complete the scene as well, from, the, from also from Iconic Air, I've got their RAF trolley accumulator. So these would be for the batteries, the old lead-filled batteries that these aircraft had. So you'd see this usually hooked up to whatever the aircraft is. I often see these in, in uh, you know, hooked up to Spitfires and Hurricanes as well as the larger aircraft. So um, great to have. I should probably get a bunch of these actually for any scene. They'd, they'd go well. So and these were usually painted in the RAF blue, as you can see. Um, whereas this one, they're saying it should be in an olive drab um, with RAF logos on it, the little roundels and that. So should be good. I'm excited to put this stuff together. I'll show you how it goes. And just like that, we are finished with our scene. So I built up the uh, Iconic Air uh, RAF uh, tractor there really beautiful resin kit very happy with it really simple uh to put together and really nice parts and yeah very impressed with it and then those are also the iconic air uh, bomb carts there's the c and d type there um and then you got the cookie in behind and as you can see in the reflection i i installed bomb hangers in the front of the bomb bay that have yet to be dropped down and attached to uh more incendiaries. I've got a bunch of incendiaries already loaded up, installed in the rear there, and the cookie is rolled in position so it would get hung in the middle there. So I've got that all assembled and looking good. So uh, yeah, and there's these other incendiaries there like I was showing you earlier. So all looks really great. You can see the, uh, the lettering that the uh, tractor has on it. So, and as I come around the side here, I've got my crew, and this is that resin kit out of New Zealand, the Lancaster crew, all painted. And so I just took a, made a, a black styrene base and, and made the top of it like asphalt. And uh, yeah, got the crew ladder uh, at the door there with some extra parachutes. And uh, yeah, just, comes together beautifully. That looks really good. Those crew really came to life. Very happy with that. So. And they're all just kind of approaching the aircraft, a dog greeting them as they're getting close. So yeah, those guys look really good. And really, yeah, pulls together with the rest of the aircraft. So. I'm going to call that finished. That looks really great in there. I've got it all assembled. I, I fixed that wire a little better 
with some white tape under it, as you can see in the back. So I can fire it up. Oh, and I uh, forgot to point out on this side, you can see uh, just under the where they've got the engines exposed, I've got that accumulator trolley just right there. That's where they would they would plug it in uh, through the open landing gear there to uh, hook up to the batteries for starting. So that's is in there as well. So yeah, I can turn it on with my little smart plug and uh, she'll come to life. Starts off with the lighting inside there. Lovely. You can see the landing lights in the reflection there under the wing. So yeah, very happy with how that all turned out. <laughs> Hard to keep the glass clean, but uh, it is what it is. I'm glad to be finished. So that's our new coffee table. Quite the quite the piece. So. I'm going to call that an end to the video um, and an end to this series, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, until next time, my name is Jeff Chrysler, a detail enthusiast. We'll see you again.